Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to understand what we are reading here is what you know. And um, I was meditating about the book of Judges, why Samson could catch 300 foxes and light their tails with, with fire and they run through the grains and burn everything. I was, I was meditating about that. And the Bible say, will always say, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The spirit of the Lord came mightily. And he did this. I was meditating about why Samson can use a jaw of a donkey to kill 1,000. Just to kill 1,000. Do you know uh, why I'm saying this? <clears throat> Look at the issue of Samson. <clears throat> Killing 1,000. And the Bible says 3,000 Israelites came to him and say, Look here. They are searching for you. They want to bind you. They say we must bind you only and hand you over. But look what he did, Samson. 3,000 men reporting to one man. 3,000. They came to Samson and say, hey, the Philistines are against us. But they say we must bind you. So allow us to bind you. Are you hearing that? And when we bind you, 
we are going to hand you over there. And the Bible says, they use the new ropes. But when the Philistines shouted, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And those things, those ropes melted like wax. So I was meditating about that. Just hold on on that because we are reading about our Lord Jesus Christ. I found that our Lord Jesus Christ, when he invited the disciples to pray, he invited them. Remember, already there was one disciple who was already left when they were eating. And the disciples left when they were eating. But now, he took these ones who were eleven and crossed the valley to get the money. And the Bible says, when they are on the other side, he spoke with the eight of them and say, "You sit here." He says, "Sit here." Out of them, he took three. Are you hearing that? He took three. It was two of them were sons of Zebedee and Peter. When he moved from them, those he told them, sit here, he began to tell them, my soul is sorrowful. In other words, he was saying, I can have depression. When I think about this, my mind cannot comprehend. He began to explain the truthfulness of what he's going to face. But he reached a place and said, you be left here. There are eight there. There are those who said be left here. And he moved away from these ones with, I mean, a few steps and knelt down to pray. These ones could hear him praying, but those ones were hearing nothing. The eight people who were left here, who were sitting, the Lord said, sit here. In other words, carry on talking. If you have another thing, you can talk. If you want to eat, you can carry on eating. I mean, relax here, you. But this ones, three, he says, remain here. If you ask the eight ones and say, where is the Lord? You will say, he's there. Where? There. No direction. The eight ones, they never had direction. But the three ones here, they say, he's here. They knew where he is, but the Lord put them between the ones who prayed there. Are you hearing me? The Lord put them here and said, you remain here between me and the ones who just sit there. There are many Christians who are just sitting like that. Not invited. I was asking my God, why Peter and sons of Zebedee were chosen? Why they were invited by the Lord that time? They were Matthew. They were other people. And I found that it's scriptural. The Bible says one day, if you read Matthew 20, verse 22, if you can read going down, you will see, you will see the mother uh, of the sons of Zebedee. You will see them coming to the Lord and he said, I want you, what if my son, another one, can sit on the right and another one on the left? I'm sure you remember that. And the Lord says, are you going to drink the cup? Are you going to drink the cup I'm drinking? They said, yes, Lord. And the Bible says, he said, you are able to drink the cup. But the one who put on the left and on the right is what? Is God. So that is why the Lord 
invited them further so that if they are approved, the Lord will put them on the left. God will put them on the left or on the right. I'm sure you are hearing me. So listen to this. The Bible says, I was just questioning, why Peter? The Bible talks about Peter. Peter himself. He, because after they, they were denied by the Lord, the Bible says all of them were angry. But let's look at Peter on Matthew 26. We found that Peter one day, when he heard the Lord say, you know, I'm going to face this and that, he went to the Lord and said, no, me, I won't run away. Me, I won't run away. I'm ready even to lose my life. That's why they were taken to where Jesus was ready to do what? To lose his life. Do you know that there's something happened when Jesus was praying? Because the Bible says, as he was affected emotionally, the angel of the Lord came and touched him. In other words, those three were supposed also to be touched there, but the Bible says they could not endure. And what makes them not to endure was the flesh. So we read, we found that when the Lord came back, he found them sleepy. And what is it that the Lord says? He says the spirit is what? Is willing, but the problem is what? Is the flesh. Okay, look here. It is the Lord who was coming back to speak with the three, but not with the eight. The Lord was not worrying about the eight. He was speaking with the three. You know, I want to tell you this, but I realize that it is true that all the time, whether we like it or not, it will be few people that will be invited where God will speak with them. But because the flesh, what is it that they were busy with? They ate the flesh. They were not ready. If we read when, they, when Peter spoke that I'm ready to die, the Bible says, they also said, even us, we are ready to die. The Lord was not interested in a group. That is why he left them there. He's not interested in a choir. You want individuality. He want you to deal with your own flesh. You know, Andres, when God told me about to preach this message, I was entering there. Now I'm just seeing this is a place. I was seeing one man being lifted up and stand on air. And I was saying, look at that man. And then I got a revelation. Why today our bodies are heavy? It's because we have a soul that was created to control the body with limitations. But when the Spirit of God enters you, we are able to jump up to a level of greatness. Listen to this. We have a challenge today because of the flesh. Yeah. Tell somebody says you have a problem with the flesh. Because the flesh wants to drag you down here. Yeah. Even when you are invited. Look at this. There's something that happened, which because I don't want to preach long, but I want to tell you. Something happened. When the Lord came back again, the Bible says they were in deep sleep. It talks about the issue of their eyes. The first time was the flesh, but later he says the eyes were, were what? Heavy. Were heavy. heavy. Now, it shows that when the flesh is weak, or let's say when the spirit you have is failing to carry the flesh or control the flesh, it means your eyes will be heavy in a deep sleep. Look here, it was the Lord himself when he came for the last time, my God. 
he found these people still sleeping and wake them up that the betrayer is here. These people were supposed to be knowing that the betrayer is coming. But they know when the problem is here. The problem is here. They wake up. Already the Lord has prayed for them so that even if they can be lost, they will be recovered back. But look at the issue of why are we failing today to be led by the Spirit? You know, when we read the Bible in the book of Romans 8, it tells us that those who are led by the Spirit are what? Are the sons and daughters. I want to tell you that led, the word led, it talks about carried. Those who are carried by the Spirit are sons and daughters. I'm sure today we can understand that in our Christian life, there are things in us which our flesh depend on and make our spirit to be so much heavy and fail also to carry the flesh which is also heavy. We are in a heavy spirit that cannot carry the heavy flesh. I don't know if you're hearing me. We, we, when I say heavy spirit, because we are failing to discern what kind of spirit is that. At the end of the day, we want to carry the flesh we have. We, we, we are failing to lead ourselves where God wants us to be led. I want to read a scripture because I don't talk without reading a scripture. But touch someone and say, my friend, it seems as if your flesh is so heavy. I want to show you something here. In this verse. Hmm. Acts 16. From verse 6 to 8. Read that verse. Acts 16, from verse 6 to 8. Oh, the one who's reading is here. Acts 16, mm. Acts 16 chapter, verse 6 through 8. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia, and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mycenae, they uh, essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mycenae, came down to Troas. Yes, let's look at that verse because I'm talking about Jesus carrying his disciple where the angel came to touch him. But then they could hear what Jesus was saying, but they were in deep sleep. But here, now we are seeing Paul. Paul understood the issue of being carried. He understood because, remember, he also had a problem that he prayed to God and asked God. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. You remember that? So in other words, he began to live with a thorn, understanding that the thorn cannot affect his spirit. He was led. He understood the issue of being led. In Acts chapter 13 verse 1, the Bible says, they were released by prayer. But here is when they were busy moving to all direction to preach as he had his zeal. But there's something that I love here. It says, after they came to Messiah, they 
tried to go to Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, here, you know, I love it because it's not say the Holy Spirit. It shows that there's a spirit of Jesus. I don't know if you're hearing me. The spirit of Jesus did not permit them. How? In other words, they were going there, the spirit says, hey, turn this side. Look here. They were going. And if you are denying that, what happened to Philip? What happened to Philip? If you are denying that the spirit of Jesus can do that, look here, their flesh was not heavy. I don't know if you're hearing me. Their flesh was not heavy. I think uh, this is more than, you know, us laying hands on you. But you, you know, seeing what God can do above being laying hands. Look here, I want to enter here. And, and the spirit of Jesus is here. Push me back. Is it happening to you? Because you, you are just entering, isn't it? Because, you know, remember you have the, the soul. You enter where a drunkard has entered. Here, the spirit of Jesus, why, what is going on? And the Holy Spirit tells them, no, the spirit of Jesus doesn't want you to go there. So I'm saying if you are denying this, Look what happened to Philip after he baptized then Enoch. Are you hearing that? The spirit of Jesus took him up and he found himself in another place. He was not heavy. We have got a problem in our flesh because when we are invited, we are left talking city. We have got a problem in our flesh. We are busy with things that are occupying us. Whereas we are invited. Say, I'm invited. So, but look here, you are the one who determined yourself. The Spirit of Jesus. The Spirit of Jesus. Do you know that if you can read, I want to tell you something. If you can read on Acts chapter 12, if you just read there, you find a story. It's just like a story. This thing is not happening now. Because we have got too much in our body here. We've got rice. Too much rice. <laughs> Look at the Bible says, the Bible says that when Peter was sleeping, the angel appeared to strike him. Do you know what happened to Peter? He became a spirit. Peter became spirit because the people who were guarding could not see him as much as they cannot see the angel. What happened to him? The chains. How can the chain fail when they are tied? He was a spirit. Look here. If we understand, if we understand that the Bible says the spirit that is in us gives life to what? To our mortal body. If, if truly the spirit gives life to our mortal body, it means our mortal body becomes spirit. You are a spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. There is something in us here that is keeping us so normal here so that we operate like others. Look what the Bible says. Is Peter, when he went to the last door, you remember that? which was coming to the road, isn't it? To the city. The Bible says he came to what? To his senses. When, when, when Peter was following the angel, he doesn't understand what was happening. His senses were dead. So now, if we start now and deal with our senses, we are inviting the Holy Spirit to effect anything in our lives. We are so much in senses. These five senses are robbing us. 
I pray that God will help you. I pray that God will help you. Can you touch someone and say, my friend, what is happening with you? It is time now that you are invited. Uh, I was asking myself, why Jesus? In fact, I'll close. But I was asking myself, Andres, why Jesus could love to go and pray in the garden? Because in the garden, number one, there's productivity. There's new life in the garden. In the garden, there's new life. Productivity is there. And we are not looking now in the productivity in spirit. We are looking in productivity in flesh. We never heard that when Jesus was in the garden, he got a fruit. But in the garden is a place of fruits. In the garden is a place of what? Of fruits. Uh, I wish we understand that we are invited to have fruits. We are invited to be productivity, to be product, to be productivity, in productivity, for productivity, let me say that. The problem is our flesh. It is our flesh. I'm reading the last scripture we close. Because uh, it's very late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. That is the reason why I asked myself, why when the Spirit came mightily to this man, could, he could catch foxes. Do you know fox? Do you know for a one fox you can't catch it? One. Because it make no, if you make noise, it run away. It's a very intelligent animal. Catching three of them, uh, two of them will suspect uh, this man is dangerous. Let's run away. <laughs> but look what happened. Okay, let's, let's read this and we close. Second Corinthians 10, 2 to 4. I'll close when I read this. In fact, today, when I was in the hotel, Andres, I was doing like this. I wanted to check if I can, I can fly. <laughs> but uh, I was checking. I said, my body is here. What's wrong? I did like, you know. But I realized that it's not when you are deciding to do it. I'm sure I understand what I'm trying to say. Because remember that Peter was not thinking. Philip, was he thinking? You don't need to think. 2 Corinthians 10, 2 to 4. Let's read that verse, Mama. We close. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 2 through 4. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Thank you. This verse is waking us all up. That now, whoever wants to succeed, there's a warfare. If you are growing, there's a warfare. If your body is growing, there's what? Warfare. If there's tomorrow, there's what? Warfare. So if there's warfare, we need to understand that if our weapons are not carnal, if our weapons are not in flesh, who are we? 
Why do we have to be in flesh? It says the weapons of warfare are not physical. We are not physical. You know, Jesus one day, the Bible says, uh, he was speaking with the Jews. They become very angry. They, were, they become very angry. And uh, to extend that, he told them straight that you, you do your things of your father, which is the devil. If I tell you that I come from the father, you're still going to deny. But the works that you do are of your father, which is what? The devil. And the question, he says, you want to kill me. I mean, if they say, no, devil is not our father. Our father is what? Abraham. He says, no, if you are, our father is Abraham, you will love me. You will really love me. If, but you are doing the things of your father. Your father, Abraham, loved to see my day. But Lou, what are you doing? They were like, ah. Abraham, we are talking about Abraham. I mean, you are not even yet 50. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, uh, before Abraham was, I am. What is it that they did? They took stones. Huh? And they came to him. What happened? He disappeared. In spirit, he disappeared. I understood why Jesus disappeared because the Bible talks about the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You remember the spirit that raised Jesus? Yes, it will also work in our physical body. If that is the case, it means we won't die. But look here, our weapons are not what? I just want to stop there. God bless you. Let us all stand. Ah, I'm asking myself that uh, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking myself, do we understand the Holy Spirit? It looks like we understand the Holy Spirit to a limitation of speaking in tongues, but not more than that. It's like we are so much in talking in tongues, but more than that. Especially here in USA. Yeah, especially here in USA. We are, we are understanding Holy Spirit in a way of speaking in tongues, and whereas we cannot discern the tongue. Paul says, I speak in tongues more than you, but I speak only two or three ways. Isn't it? Yes. Uh, you know why I'm telling you this? Let's not understand the Holy Spirit by the side of the gift. Let's understand Him as the Spirit because we are Spirit. Hmm. My God. <laughs> My God, if you, if you sit with me, if you just sit with me, I, I, I can teach you to understand what is Holy Spirit. Because we are understanding Holy Spirit on the side of the gifts. When someone prophesies, it means filled with the Holy Spirit. So somebody can still prophesy without being filled. Because you don't understand if this is the Spirit. That is why today we are so much, you know, we don't understand. We don't understand. If we go to the Bible, we will understand that the apostles could be stopped by the Spirit of God. Was it not the Spirit of God that told Peter, go with them? Peter saw a vision, but for him to interpret that vision, it was the Spirit of God said, go with them. The Bible says, Holy Spirit whisper. You understand? Go with them. This is friendship. We are invited to a friendship. Amen. Lift up your hands. 
I believe we can pray this prayer and ask God to help us today. That if there's anything in our flesh, let's confess it out. Prayer. Confess this thing out. Confess that out. Father, we are not so limited. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.